Okay, Miss Sophie, so tell us something about yourself and why should we select you as a candidate for the job? My name is Sophie Grover. I am from Kolkata. I am passing just my graduation. Uh, so, um, I uh, this uh, uh, this job is very uh, important for me. Um, I can't. Can correlate with the situation. Do you too feel dejected for poor English? Is your poor communication skill leaving a permanent scar on your career? Then guess what? You can now put your thoughts and worries at rest. Because I am here to give you all the tips you require to develop your communication skill. You'll get here all the possible remedies for your communication and pronunciation related troubles that you really have been waiting for. So what would be our first lesson? Let me think. It must be on how to introduce yourself in English. See, you have been to different schools, colleges, possibly different interviews and everywhere you have been asked the same question. Tell us something about yourself. So describe yourself briefly and you've been like clueless about expressing yourself. That is why introducing yourself in English is one of the most important and the basic part of communicative English. To watch the Hindi version of the video, you may click notification up there. Here I'm gonna tell you the exact process how you can express yourself, introduce yourself like an S. So without any further delay, Let's get started. So a standard introduction actually consists of seven or eight points. First of all, you should go with your name. Just like my name is Shuman Kyle. So when I introduce myself, I say my name is Shuman Kyle or I am followed by your name. So that's how you tell your name to someone and that's the basic and the first point to introduce yourself. Next on the card should definitely be your current city or native place that is your residence or your address so it would be like suppose you are introducing yourself internationally so you tell them that you are from India and more specifically Kolkata just like when I introduce myself I say that that I am from India Kolkata and uh, suppose you are introducing yourself someone uh, regionally then you may go like I am from this particular place that's it. But you need to go as short as possible. You surely need to include your postal address or pin code or something like that. That would be really hilarious. Thirdly, you really want to speak about your occupation or the profession that you're currently in. So just like suppose you are an engineer, so you may say I'm an engineer, so I'm a doctor or maybe for me it's like I'm a communicative English and accent trainer or maybe uh, I am an aspiring YouTuber, right? So that's how we go with it. So whenever you talk about occupation, you say, I am this, I am that, or I'm currently doing this particular thing. Just like I'm currently sh shooting for my YouTube videos, I'm trying to be an Fourth YouTuber. Point is a must inclusion when you are in an interview. So that is your qualification, right? You must think about your qualification when you are for, going for an interview or something like that or you are introducing yourself formally somewhere but in general you may skip that you know why because some people have great degrees out there they may brag about it proudly but sometimes you lack in them so you can tactfully skip that part so if you talk about qualification you may say I am a PhD holder I'm MSc I'm MCOM I'm Maybe you are a student, you may say, I'm pursuing my, this degree, or I'm pursuing my graduation, I'm pursuing some other skills as well. So that's how it is. But remember, when you don't have so many things, you may say, all my qualifications are related to my current occupation. That's it. That's how you skip it tactfully. Well, now it's time for your additional skills. What is additional skill? Additional skill is something that you do uh, apart from your actual occupation or apart from your actual qualification, the skills that you have or maybe you don't apply them but you know something but from your academic qualification. Just like for me it is uh, web page designing, right? I'm a professional web page designer apart from being a communicative English trainer. So that's how it is. So when you have an additional skill, 
you should show that one. You may Nextly, try. you should talk about your special quality. Now some people say their special quality is their hobbies, right? They include their hobbies as their special qualities. But I am with a bit different opinion. Your hobby is something that you do in your free time, but you may not be best at. But your special quality is something that you are best at. So when you have a kind of talent or you have a kind of thing that you can do at your best, then please mention that one. Just like when someone tell me, you know, someone asks me, uh, you know, what is your special talent? I say, my special talent is I am really diligent. And if you give me some purpose, if you give me some kind of responsibility out there, you can rest assured that it's going to be done. See, if you say something like that in front of an interviewer, he goes gaga over you and you're definitely going to get the job, right? You're not mentioning any special talent, but still you're saying something that is really special. Next one is your hobbies. So now when you're in an interview, it is not that necessary to include your hobby unless the interview asks for that one. But in general, when you're meeting someone, maybe you're dating someone or maybe uh, you're going to for a matchmaking there, right? You may say that my hobby is this. You never know your hobby might get someone attracted. So if I say my hobby is singing, so if you have any, you can say like that, my hobby is to do that in my free time, right? That's what it is because hobby is what you do when you have leisure time, right? When you have free time. So in there are some people who have different hobbies out there, right? They're the same time like singing, like dancing, they do painting in their free time, they watch TV, they like to gossip a lot. But when you have many hobbies out there, so you can simply say that I have a plethora of hobbies, right? Plethora means a lot. So you just can say I have plethora of hobbies like this, this, this. For example, if I say so, I have plethora of hobbies like reading books, dancing, singing, painting, etc. Plethora means a lot. So you can say a plethora of hobbies, right? Carefully, you know, notice the pronunciation plethora of hobbies. Next on the card is a very interesting one because here you introduce the persons or personalities who inspires you the most and why so. As for me, the personalities who inspire me the most are Ellen DeGeneres and Ritha Porno Post. Ellen DeGeneres, as you may have known, is a talk show host. She has a remarkable audience. Moreover, she has gone through many difficulties in her life. Still, she has come out as winner all the time. And the way she has handled her homosexuality really inspires me to be what I am. And as for Rithwana Ghosh, she is one of the renowned directors of India. He has tremendous capability as far as the film direction is concerned. He inspired us with his films, with his works. Unfortunately, he died in the year 2014. But he will keep inspiring us with the way he had handled himself. And he inspires us to be proud of what we are. Thus, by mentioning the name of your inspiration and adding a brief information about the person, you can actually tell about your inspiration in short. And the last but not the least, the point you really need to include is your goal. So you may be uh, in some kind of profession, but you still have a goal to achieve. So you may be vocal about that and it's good to be vocal about that. So say that thing, that what you really want to do, what you really want to achieve in your near future. Just like I am, you know, a communicative skill trainer and later on I want to be a YouTuber and then I have another goal that is a bit hush hush. Still, I can be vocal about that. That is, I want to be the highest taxpayer of India. So friends, these were the most useful points to introduce yourself in English like an S. Always remember, try to be confident while you are speaking them out and impress the person in front of you with your breathtaking personality. Hello and welcome to my channel, The Phenomenal English. Wish you all a very very happy and prosperous new year. Don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that whenever there is a new video on my channel, you get notified. Also share your thoughts in the comment section down below to appreciate and encourage me. And don't you dare troll me because you know it's beyond netiquette. So let's call it a day. You know it's an idiom. It means when you say goodbye and when you officially close something, right? So let's call it a day. If you can't speak English, just start speaking English because there is no other better way of learning English rather than speaking itself.